It looks like the tropics are heating up and it's on its way off to the southeastern portions of the United States. What more could it do and when will be coming up? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion for August 26, 2023. Now, we do have a bit of activity that is starting to stir up here. We have to start with the tropics here we have two areas to watch of course we have hurricane franklin which is uh been rumbling about for quite a f you know quite a few days now it is uh anticipated to continue to uh march its way up north and then we have recently designated tropical depression 10 and uh, where that will go we will talk about a little bit later on in the video now the other areas aren't really that much of a concern so let's take what we know and run with it there is franklin there right there is tropical depression 10 and uh you can see that both of these storms look relatively healthy. We'll start with Franklin here. Franklin is a 75 mile per hour category one hurricane. This thing is expected to continue to march off towards the north, towards the general vicinity of Bermuda. And before doing so, right around Monday morning is anticipated to intensify into a category three hurricane. And that will continue to march up all the way up until it gets towards the general area of Bermuda before it will continue to weaken and then head further and further out to sea. Now, just because it is further out to sea does not mean that it could not make impacts along the east coast of North America. Rip currents are a thing, and uh, it is all the more prominent when you have a strong system like a hurricane out there. So if you're along the east coast out here for summer, I know we've got, you know, school that started, so maybe not a whole lot of people on the beaches and stuff like that. But stretching from Florida all the way up to Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, you guys should definitely be watching out for the threat of rip currents all the way throughout the week here and in towards the next weekend. We'll dive a little bit more into Franklin here. You can see contrast to yesterday to where it only had one part of the eye that was uh, kind of fully enclosed by thunderstorms. It now has fully enclosed itself in these thunderstorms. We do have a little bit of dry air that is starting to seep in here on the eastern side, a little bit past the eye wall here. And so uh, that is kind of the reason why it is not fully symmetrical. I mean, it just kind of has a little bit of this swirly characteristic here, but otherwise very healthy. You can tell that that it is healthy and is not being plagued by shear compared to what it was over the past few days because these little feathery cirrus clouds are just expanding in all sorts of different directions and when you see that that tells you that you have a pretty healthy tropical system so uh, just something to note here wind shear is not plaguing this thing anymore now it's going to be a bit of the dry air and how much that dry air could actually impact this tropical system will be something to watch as it continues to move off towards the north now, if we take a look at the microwave satellite imagery, you can see exactly what I just talked about and how a lot of these reds are your general thunderstorms, if you will. And you can see there's a little bit of an eye that's forming right there. Uh, it's not exactly the most well-defined eye in the world, but it is poking out through that eye wall right there. And it's just kind of a, uh, a good sign for where the center of low pressure is. But otherwise, you can see that there aren't really as many thunderstorms in this area. A lot of this light blue contrast to the northeastern and northern sides of this thing to where it has uh, an abundance of thunderstorms. So until it becomes a little bit more symmetrical, this thing probably won't intensify uh, very significantly, at least as of right now, until it fixes that issue. So it's got a little bit, but it may try to swirl a lot of these thunderstorms back around and close off where the dry air is coming from, which just so happens to be the area west of it. So if it does that, we could probably see this thing start to intensify further as it continues to move off towards the north. Now, as for where this thing is going this is the look at the vorticity and the wind shear with the wind barbs and so i'll just try and point out as to where exactly this is going right now we have a big ridge over uh, much of the atlantic right now so that's kind of where the general flow is this kind of clockwise flow if you will and so the flow is currently coming from the south below the hurricane and it is pushing it off towards the north and so this hurricane as of right now or at least franklin is going to continue to march off into that general direction up until we have this new trough that's going to be digging through here into Canada. And you can see this kind of line of vorticity that aligns with it. This trough is actually going to steer Franklin further and further away from land. So as it continues to move off towards the north, you'll see it start to curl off to the right. And boom, you can start to see Franklin start to go further out to sea. However, if Franklin starts to slow down, it could potentially get very, very close to Bermuda, which is kind of the reason why I'm still like 
Bermuda, you guys still need to watch out a little bit. Nothing is really all too clear cut with where Franklin could potentially go, especially with how fast it's moving right now. So something to note, something to note if you're over there in Bermuda, just continue to pay attention. And speaking of things to pay attention to, what more than the newly designated Tropical Depression 10? This thing just formed here, according to the National Hurricane Center, at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And as of right now, it's only a 30 mile per hour storm, so nothing too significant. It's also pretty stationary. You don't really have a whole lot of flow that's getting to this thing quite yet. But we are anticipating sometime around tonight into tomorrow morning, we're expecting this thing to start to kind of just meander and then move off. All right, it's going to continue to stay stationary. And then once it gets its act together sometime around tomorrow afternoon to tomorrow evening, so Sunday afternoon to Sunday evening, this thing will eventually start to move off towards the north. And because of that, we have the uh, threat for it to become a tropical storm in the general area. And we have some tropical storm warnings that have been issued for the northeast portions of the Yucatan Peninsula. We also have tropical storm watches over on the western portions of Cuba, and of course we also have this uh, pretty big eyesore here that you can see on the cone of uncertainty. Sometime around Tuesday afternoon, this thing is anticipated to become a hurricane according to the National Hurricane Center. The ceiling for this thing, however, is higher than a hurricane. I believe this thing could potentially get up to a major hurricane if it has enough time to do so, and it's going to be sitting over some pretty unstable waters in order for it to continue to be able to uh, further intensify significantly. And we have some of the models that could be hinting for the potential of that to happen, and of course I'll dig into that a little bit later. But, there is one thing that we can look at, and that's the satellite imagery. And this thing doesn't look that far off contrast to Franklin. If this thing were to become a tropical storm, the name would be Idalia. So, if you guys live over in the southeastern United States, and you start hearing this name, realize that this is a tropical system that's going to be moving off towards your general area. But you can see here on the satellite, this thing looks like a healthy tropical system. I mean, you can see the general swirl. It's not moving that fast, but you can see the little feathery cirrus that I've been talking about and how it's just spreading all over the place. This thing does not have any wind shear next to it. It might have a little bit of dry air next to it. You can see a lot of these little lines that are kind of forming along the uh, sides of this tropical system. Usually when you have those lines, those are some out flow boundaries that can be created and that's usually because of cold pooling which can be accompanied by dry air so uh, when there is dry air present in the atmosphere that's usually where the outflow boundaries can occur and of course that's a good sign to find it so we have a little bit of dry air around it. We're anticipating this thing to continue to form more and more showers and thunderstorms, though, to kind of counter that dry air and allow it to be in a better environment. There's a lot of stable air. It's trying to become unstable. Now, funny enough, we have a radar imagery here coming from Cancun. It's a little gift that I have here. This is from uh, Brian McNoldy from the University of Miami. So, uh, thank you so much. I'll put a link to that in the description if you want to see that. But you can kind of see as this thing has continued to develop more and more. Look at this general spin that's starting to form right here. You see how it's continuing to form this counterclockwise spin? That is going to be an area to watch. And because of that, the National Hurricane Center is going to be sending some planes out to investigate what's going on. We have, uh, of course, the uh, two missions that are going to be sent into Franklin, both of which are from the Air Force. But we have seven missions that are going to be sent into Idalia tomorrow if this thing becomes a tropical storm. And you can see here, we have four that are from the uh, National Hurricane Center or NOAA and stuff like that. We have three that are from the Air Force. Two of which from NOAA are going to be with tail Doppler radar, which means they're going to have radar on their plane and they're going to actually see what's going on with it as they fly through. That's going to be pretty cool. And the other two is going to be upper air synoptic surveillance, basically meaning they're going to go around the hurricane and see what the environment is like to see what's going to happen. And uh, by figuring all that out, they can predict the future. They can have a better idea as to what the impacts could be towards land. Now, the one thing that is pretty consistent is the governor of Florida has already issued a state of an emergency for 33 counties. So if you are in that state of an emergency, you should be paying attention to the National Hurricane Center as much as possible. They have updates every single six hours. And if you would like to go to pay attention to it, go look at the National Hurricane Center on Google, uh, follow them on Twitter, Facebook, all sorts of stuff so that you may be able to be informed. Now, if you were with me yesterday, I showed this map here, the ocean heat content, and it gave a good reason as to why it is so important for tropical systems. And I wanna mention it again, but I'm not gonna mention as much of it because I went into depth with it yesterday. But the ocean heat content for people who don't know is basically 
the heat and how much it extends down into the water. And hurricanes love to pull heat from the water, and that's how it's allowed to form more showers and thunderstorms, which can then allow it to intensify further and further. And so, if we go back and we look at what the actual cone of uncertainty was for Tropical Depression 10 now, we compare it to what the ocean heat content, which is essentially, once again, the uh, energy for these tropical systems to really take advantage of what's going on and intensify, we can see that it's going to go over a lot of this stuff, at least at some point. Now, one thing that's really interesting, I heard a lot of people compare this to Hurricane Michael, the Category 5 that hit Panama City Beach. Uh, this is very similar, but Michael went over a lot more ocean heat content. This one, maybe not as much, maybe a tad bit little less. So I'm not anticipating another Michael. It's going to be very similar, though, if it's going to be a worst case scenario. That is, once again, if these things can continue to take advantage of everything out in the environment. And there's a couple things that need to happen in order for it to do so, which I'm going to show you in a second. But the ocean heat content, all these reds here, is uh, in the path of that cone of uncertainty. You have a lot of energy for this thing to really try and ramp up a bit. So let's start crossing off things that could potentially limit this thing from becoming that worst case scenario. So I took a giant box sounding over the tropical system. Uh, this was taken uh, in advance and it is expected to come into fruition sometime around Monday. This is the uh, the model saying that at least. And uh, I took a box sounding. It's the general area of the tropical system in and around it. And there is some dry air that is within this. So there is still a little bit of stable air with it, but it's not as much as what it is today. And so that's kind of something to kind of note. Maybe this thing could potentially try and make things a lot more unstable. Uh, it's actually happened a lot sooner than uh, we originally thought it did. So maybe that trend could potentially continue. Maybe this thing could potentially try to intensify further. But when you have a lot of dry air aloft, that means you don't really have a whole lot of thunderstorms because thunderstorms kind of need moisture. And same thing with hurricanes. I talked about the ocean heat content and how much energy there is in the water. So the last thing there is is wind shear. And wind shear can essentially blow the thunderstorms away from the center of low pressure and allow it to kind of stagnate itself. It's not really uh, intensifying. It's not really weakening. It could potentially even weaken if it really wanted to, but it's not allowing itself to really ramp up anything further. And so what it's gone right now is it's kind of sitting under its own little anticyclonic high, and there's not really much to do with it. But what happens a little bit later on is we actually have this big trough that starts to kind of dig in sometime around uh, Monday morning into Tuesday. And it starts with this low pressure system off of the coast of Dixie. We also have another low pressure system that's going to be uh, south of Texas over here into northern Mexico. And this is going to actually uh, supply a little bit of wind shear to try and nullify the strengthening of Tropical Depression 10 or Idalia as it continues to move off towards the north and east. So something to kind of watch out for that. And then we also have a big dip in the jet stream up here into portions of the central United States. This could also potentially steer this thing further away and up the coast of the United States as this continues to move on through. But for right now, we're anticipating somewhere uh, from Tuesday into Wednesday, and maybe even later on on Wednesday is when the potential landfall could be. And there's just so many factors right now that could be playing out over the next 24 hours that we don't really know specifically what is going to happen on land. But we do know that there is a ceiling, there is a floor. The floor is category one hurricane is what the National Hurricane Center says. The ceiling, can look something like this. These are the new uh, aforementioned hurricane models that are supposed to take over the HWRF, and it's called the HAFS model, the H-A-F-S model. It has an A version, it has a B version. And uh, let's take a look at what it says here. As it continues to move along, it starts to intensify further and further. Pretty strong storm. We're talking about maybe a 120 mile per hour storm uh, at landfall here, which would be a major hurricane as it lands near the Apalachicola areas. So something to keep in mind with that. But the extreme hurricane models say that this thing is going to be extreme. The potential for rapid intensification is possible. And because of that, we must kind of still have that in the back of our heads that, hey, the potential for a major event is possible here in the Big Bend of Florida. 
So what about the B version? Well, let's take a look. The B version takes it all the way up. You can see it moves through. It gets a lot stronger. 145 mile per hour winds right before it makes landfall. Uh, sometime around Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And that'll be somewhere in between Apalachicola and the uh, Panama City area. So if you guys just live in those areas in general, I'd say from Pensacola all the way over to Tampa Bay, you guys should be watching out for the potential of landfall in that area. We've narrowed it down this much into this area, in my opinion. So something to make a note of. Uh, but the other thing to make a note of, and this is the serious part of the actual stream, but here's your floor. Here's the GFS model that we've been showing you this entire time. And this is uh, making landfall as a 981 millibar storm, which is something around where Franklin is right now, a 75 to 80 mile per hour Cat 1 hurricane. So if that happens, then of course it's a lot better. But I think the general consistency is it's going to make landfall somewhere over near the Big Bend in the panhandle of Florida. So this is where you guys need to watch out. And this is kind of the serious part of the video. Because of the fact that it has such a high ceiling, I think we should just go ahead and start getting prepared. The state of emergency has already been declared. I'm not saying evacuate, but I would rather be safe than sorry in this instance. All right. They're probably going to issue evacuations over the next two days. And uh, by then it may be too late because there's going to be so much traffic, food and supplies are going to also be limited and stuff like that. I would just start doing it right now. It's better to be safe than sorry. And of course, we still have a lot longer to go in hurricane season. If something else can happen later on, you can just use the supplies for later on. That's uh, good. I would, that's what I would recommend at least. So hopefully you guys take what the National Hurricane Center seriously. Of course, I'm just relaying the information of what the models and what they say. But, of course, you're going to want to continue to, once again, pay attention to local officials and the National Hurricane Center for all your main information. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications. Share this with friends and family and on social media. Also, follow me on social media. Link will be in the description down below. I will catch you guys tomorrow with another video. We got three days in a row. It'll continue to be uh, as long as it can until... Uh, Idalia, which will probably be the name of it tomorrow, is uh, finally gone up and out of here. And uh, once that's gone and there isn't as much activity, then we'll go to a bit of a schedule. So hopefully it gets out of here pretty quickly and it doesn't impact a whole lot of people. So stay safe, you all. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Peace out.